How's everybody out there in Radio Land this morning? And it is a time, another time for Times of Refreshing Radio Talk Show. And in the studio with me today, I have Prophetess Colleen Daly. Say up to us today, Prophetess. Praise the Lord. This is a Prophetess Colleen Daly, and it's good to be here in the radio today with my good friend, Prophetess Sherry Bishop. And it's been a while. We were on the radio three years ago. Yes. So we, it's a good welcome to everyone out there that's listening. And we're going to have a good time today in the Lord. Yes, we are. You, you, you stated that it's been almost three years since the Times of Refreshing talk show came on to uh, KR, KROV. And we're a little bit rusty, but we're excited. And first excited. of all, we want to thank Elder James Lockhart for giving us this opportunity to share what God has given us. But before we get started, I want to thank my uh, cousin and my friend. Also, I want to welcome her to KROV as well. Miss Vicki Andrews. Say hello. Amen. I tell you, this 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 season has been a struggle and a journey, but Prophetess God has brought us through. Yes, he has. You know, he has made ways for us when we felt like there was going to be no way. Amen. Amen. But before we get started, I want to thank God for um, my other co-host, Apostle Alice Lockhart. She's not able to uh, be on with us today, but in the future she will be coming on with us. Our show will be every Sunday from 7 a.m. to 7.30 a.m. And I will ask you to tune in. Go to krov.com. Look for the 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 bold blue bar and look at the red arrow and when you push the red arrow we will come on amen, amen. now before we get started in today's lesson or what we're going to discuss today uh prophetess colleen daly um is on her way to africa she uh has a church in africa and I'm going to allow her a couple of minutes to tell us a little bit about what you do in Africa and what all it entails. Okay. First, um, this is going to be my third trip to Kenya, East Africa, and this time I'm going to be launching my church. I'm going to dedicate Ooh. my church, LM Restoration International Ministry, and it's to preach the gospel, to do impartation, to teach about fivefold ministry, apostolic and prophetic foundation. Because in Africa, they have a lot of apostles, we have prophets, but we, they like to to hear more about the gospel and about foundational truth. So that's one of the reasons why we're going to be there, dedicate the church so the people of God there will um, know what it is. Not just having a church, but having an impact and impartation to the people of East Africa. Amen. So you said that uh, you, built, you, you have a church over there. And how how is the church operating and you're here? Oh, that's a good that's a good question. Um my senior pastor is Pastor Pinto Wander and his wife, Prophetess Mary Wander, the both are working in ministry. We also have around seven prophet prophets in the ministry and the leaders are working together and we're practically growing. So far we have about seventy members. And we started at end around the end of May. And so it's really good moving. God is moving mightily. Amen. Amen. That is awesome. You know, because sometimes you wonder, you know, you know, you're building a church over there. And then I'm like, okay, well, who's, you can't be there every Sunday or every Wednesday night Bible study. So, you know, you have to have someone that's taking care of it. And that's a blessing when you can find someone and they be dedicated and committed to the cause. And it's a blessing when we can even get one person to come and, 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 and you know, come to the Lord. Right. And now you're 70 growing. And let me know when and what time you're leaving for Africa because we would like for the saints of God to be praying your trip. I've been leaving on the 2nd of October and um, <coughs> en route to Frankfurt, Germany, and then to Nairobi, Kenya. And I'm going to be there for a whole month. Amen. So I'm going to spend time with the people of God. I'm going <laughs> to be going to the villages, um, just giving care packages to the people of Kenya. Um, 
and not just the gospel because we talk, talk about how Jesus he just didn't just preach the gospel but he fed the multitude yes so in on that ram we're gonna be meeting the villagers and and um let them know who I am mm -hmm. that yeah now this the, the, the place in Kenya where you're going you've been there this will be your third time going there this is my third time going there this the church is in Ongara Rangai mm -hmm. And it's about, I think, around 15 minutes. If I'm, I'm not too sure from Nairobi, which is on the where the international airport is. Now I have one question to ask. It may be silly, but I have a question. Do you see any wildlife? Do you see any zebras, or monkeys, or gorillas, or anything, or alligators, or what? Just plain in daylight, you know, just walking around, you know, because you think about Africa, you think about wildlife, you know. Well, elephants and lions and tigers and bears. We saw like maybe about three feet from driving on the road to um, to Gala, a place called T T Tulia or something like that. In the village, we're going through um, narrow bridge, narrow roads, and we saw ch chimpanzee within like three feet from the car, mm -hmm. a host of them. Yeah. So, but it's not among the people. Like, oh, that's what I want to know. It's not among the people. <laughs> <laughs> you, might find, you might find places like Uganda, you see the cows in the street uh -huh. and the goats in the street. But um, in Kenya, no, I saw no animals run, running oh, okay. wild. <laughs> that's just something you know, that I always wondered about, you know, Africa. Yeah. And how are the children in Africa? Are they? Uh, I love the children. They're very um, friendly. Knowing that you come from America, there's something about Americans that everybody likes mm -hmm. over there. So they gravitate to you. They, you know, touch you. And the orphanage. We visited the orphanage in. Um, they're <coughs> desperately in need of um, like toiletries, yes. and they don't have commodes like we do in America. It's, is in the schools and they don't have computer system like we do. They, they, they it's not as developed as in America. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amen. Well, I'm I'm certainly gonna be praying for you and for, for your yes. trip. I got you lifted up yes. in prayer. I'm excited for you. I'm praying that one day. Yes. I'm not gonna say when, but one day I'll be traveling to Africa with you. Yes, that'd be great. I said one day. <laughs> That's wonderful. <laughs> I have to get the courage to go to Africa, but one day I hope to be traveling with you. But I tell you what, I might not be with you in person, but in spirit, I'm going to be yes, there with you yes. and praying for you. Thank and I'm you. asking all our listeners out there in Radio Land that can get a prayer through to be praying for Prophetess Daily. Are you traveling alone this time? Yes, I'm traveling alone by myself. Yes. Oh, yeah. I'm used to wow. That. Hero, <laughs> and I'm asking everyone to be praying for her yes. as she journeys to Africa. You're leaving next week, yes, the second of October. October the second, amen. amen. That is awesome. That is so awesome. I just thank y'all for, for you for being my co host today. And we're gonna just get right into our topic that we're gonna be discussing today. And if we were to take an, an examination of ourselves, you know. Um, what what season would we say we're in right now? You know, taking a look at what we're actually going through on a day to day basis. What season would we say we're in? You know, what would be our current season? Now we mm -hmm. already we already know that mm -hmm. there are seasons. You know, summer, winter, spring, and fall. Mm -hmm. But there are also seasons of life. Mm -hmm. So. Our topic today is recognizing the season you're in. So if I would ask anyone out in Radio Land or anyone in the studio, what season do you really think, what season do you think you're in right now? Could you tell me what season or what season would you say you're in? I believe mine is the spring. I'm springing forward into <laughs> greatness. <laughs> I'm springing forward into greatness. I would say I'm in the spring. And you know, the, when, when, when you say you're in the spring, that means that you're spring. You said you're springing forward in ministry. Yes. You know, and we know there's a there's a familiar scripture that we can go to that talks about seasons. 
Ecclesiastes 3 and 1. And I want you to read that for us. And it says, there's an appointed time for everything. And there's a time for every event under heaven. A time to give birth and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot what is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. And a time to tear down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. Amen. Amen. So there's a time for everything. And I took up the liberty to looking up some points about time. It says time is is a point or a period when something occurs. That's what time is. So what we do is we, we, we have to figure out what time it is in our lives, what season we're going through. And once we can figure out what season that we're going through, then we can deal with it. So many times, you might you might be in your season of hurt. Mm. You know, you might be in your season of plenty. It just all depends on what season you're in. You know, you might be in that season. Getting married is a season. You can't just up and just get married. You have to go through the whole work. You have to get engaged. You know, you have to get in a relationship. You have to get engaged. Not only do you have to get engaged, you got to get the ring. You got to get the... Everything it takes to get married, it takes time. So that is a what? Season. So that's a season that you're in. You know, there's a season of mourning. Right. You know, and, and you know, do we pick our times? Uh, do we pick our seasons? We know that God is in control of every season, but do we, properly? do we pick no, our times and seasons? We don't pick our seasons. It's ordained by God. The journey that we're on, we don't pick our season because seasons fluctuate. You can be in a season, particular season of plenty for a while, or you may have a season of mourning, and then it may fluctuate. So we don't know exactly, but it's ordained by God, our season. Just like the season of winter, spring, summer, and fall, mm -hmm. it's already a set time with God. Mm -hmm. We can't change it, even though we know that there are times when it may snow late, you know, we may still have snow in some areas in um, in Colorado during the springtime, mm -hmm. but we don't, set, it already set in motion, and we cannot change it, so even in this life that we're going through, this journey we're going through, we don't set when we're going to go into a dry period, That's we don't right. set when we're going to have an, what if a person have an accident, they didn't know, anticipate having mm -hmm. an accident, that can set them back into a different season, or push them right. forward. That's right. That's what it could set them back or push them forward. Right. But they need to know how to deal with it in that season yes. and realize that one thing, that God is still in control Amen. because yes. he's in control of every season. Right. Right. He yes. tells the summer when to come. He tells the spring and the fall when to come. But we do know one thing. No matter what season we fall into, there's an end to that season. There's an end. Hallelujah. Yes, it That's is. the blessed mm -hmm. part of it. Yes. It has been hot. But when I walked outside today, it was cool. When I walked outside yesterday evening, you hear what I say, walk. When I walked outside yesterday evening, Praise it was God. cool. <laughs> Versus it's been hot. So we do know that God is in control of the elements. Yes, if he's in control of the elements, he's in control of every season that we go through. So I want to discuss dry seasons. I want to discuss seasons of hurting. Hurting seasons, whether you're hurt physically, mentally, spiritually. Amen. I want to talk about those seasons. Hang out, hold on, because your season is about to change. Amen. Amen. You want to talk about that? Um, I can speak from experience that... We previously mentioned that season we have no control over it, so suddenly something can happen. But the season that you're in, in you have to understand that God is in control. Mm -hmm. And even though it might be painful, yeah. I'll be hurting, 
if you keep your own your perspective in view that God got this, God is in control of the situation, mm-hmm. you're not going to be overtaken because of the circumstances of life. That's right. Yes, you can overtake it because your mindset is not where it's supposed to be. You can go in a place of depression. Mm-hmm. You, so in the season, because I've experienced that throughout my life, I'm almost 60, praise God. <laughs> and so, so I've experienced where you feel like you're gonna be this is gonna be it you're not gonna be you cannot take certain things you cannot take certain hurt or pain but when you stay focused in worship when you stay focused in praying when you stay focused on god glory to god he it keeps you going and don't set you back and realize that everyone go through season you're not by yourself out there that's right you know and that's 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 the key word stay focused on god when you're going through your dry seasons because that's all of this sickness, mm-hmm. poverty, right, right, hurt, right. pain. Those are dry seasons, right. and a lot of people can't deal with the dry seasons. A lot of people can't deal with that. So what do they do? Oh, God left me. You know, God forgot about me. No, He did. Remember that He's in control of everything, Hallelujah. even from the foundation of the world. Hallelujah. He already knew what season you was gonna be Amen. in at this time and at this point. Amen. He already knew you was gonna go through Hallelujah. these things. Yes, He does. It's not like he didn't give us a road map. He gave us, he already done told us in his word in Ecclesiastics, sons, daughters, there's a time and a season for everything. Amen. Amen. That word everything covers all. That's what the word everything does. It covers all. It covers your not having no money. Mm-hmm. It covers you being sick. It covers Everything you being hurt, you being falling into divorce, molestation, whatever, rape, whatever. But then we got to know how to what to do when we're in those seasons. The thing not to do is to give up on God. That's right. That's right. That Job was in a season because the Bible says that he went through all of that. Right. But God gave him double for his trouble. So if God gave him double for his trouble, that lets me know that that season of sickness was over for him. That's right. That's right. Everything that was taken to him in though in that season, God gave it back to him. Mm-hmm. So that season and time had to be over. There's so many people, you Hallelujah. know, that we can relate to Glory that's in the Bible that let us know Hallelujah. that seasons change. So what we have to do when we're going through our dry seasons and we have to Go back to the word of God because there's comfort Amen. in the word. Amen. Amen. There's comfort. And God said that he's not a man that he shall lie. Amen. Every word that Amen. if you believe God and you read this word and you believe what he say, it will give you comfort in Amen. them times. Amen. Lord, I'm hurting. But I know you said Lord, you're going to heal me Lord, in, his in his time. Everybody don't get healed instantly. Right, right, right. Some people have to go through. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but it's not what you go through. It's how you go through it. So it's how we're going to deal with these seasons. Hallelujah. What are we going to do while we're going through these seasons? We're going we're gonna to read our word. Glory to God. We're going to fast. We, we're going to pray, you know. That's right. And not only we're going to pray for ourselves. I mean, I'm in a season right now. But when I go to hurting and, and, and I begin to think about other people. I begin to, when, when when those pains be hitting me, I go to I, I start praying for others. Right, right. God, there's somebody out there. Yes, yes. That's feeling the same way I'm feeling, but they don't trust you and they don't know you like I do. Oh, yeah, my, yes, so Lord, God, I'm asking God. you to strengthen them yes, right. that their faith don't fail. Because I know you got me. Yes. I know you're gonna heal me, yes. but they may not know that. So I'm standing in a gap for them. And it gets a little bit better. Yes. This is not the season for doubt. There okay. is never a season for doubt. Amen. Amen. When you're talking, the scripture came to mind, Psalms 30 and 5, where mm-hmm. it said, For his anger is but for a moment. His favor is for a lifetime. Yes. Weeping may last for the night. Come on. But shout of joy comes in the morning. <laughs> when Because... We're going through adversity, calamities, and all that. If we keep, like you said previously, trust the Lord. Mm -hmm. And know that's weeping only endure for a moment. But joy, 
joy will come. That's right. That's it, it's right. not gonna your season of grief is not gonna be long. That's right. Your season of oppression or depression and the enemy fighting, spiritual warfare comes and goes and in different it won't overtake you. That's, That's what the right. Lord said. It would not overtake you. But, You're going through this journey. It's not going to overtake you. That's right. Sometimes, you know, um, it's like me. I, I have a popcorn mentality. You know, I, microwave mentality. I don't want to wait on nothing. I want to just go right in mm-hmm. and get it done right quick. Yeah. But that's not how God is. For if he, if he took us through something very fast, what would we really learn? What would really happen? I was, I was, I, I had an experience once, and uh, I think I might have shared this with you before, and I really don't share it a lot because it does sound crazy, but it was real. Um, I was, I was in, in a, in a, going through a season, and I was in that place where I was saying, okay, God, why, why do I have to go through this particular thing? I didn't cause this upon myself. Why did I? This was years ago, and I went outside, and I got in my car, and. When I got in my car, it was hot. It was like 100 and something degrees outside. And you know, when you get in the car and the windows are up and it's very, very hot outside, you know, um, when you get in and you in that car, you, mm-hmm. you know, if you don't let the window down or start the air, it's very hot. And as soon as I got in the car and shut the door mm-hmm. and was getting ready to crank it, a cold gush, I mean a cold gush of air, like, it was winter outside came up over me and I started just panting and breathing hard and I began to hear in my mind the Lord saying see that's the reason I have to take you through seasons right, right, right. I can't just thrust you from the hot to the cold lest you die right you the see what I'm saying the revelation. unless you die see, see. I have to prepare you yes. before I can take you to winter I gotta bring you from hot mm-hmm. to the fall and start letting you get a little cool yes. before I can bring you all the way into winter. Amen. So Amen. he allowed me to know that this season is going to pass. Hallelujah, yes. This is going to pass. Yes. But I got to take you through it, and it's just like we do a baby. A baby don't stay on milk on the bottle always. We have to wean them out of that season. That's right. We That's take right. it from them, from them little by little, and gradually it's over with. That's right. It's over with. Psalms um, 37 and 7 says, Be still in the presence of the Lord and wait patiently for him to act. That's something that we don't want to do. We don't want to wait patiently mm-hmm. for our season to end. Right. But if we if we start waiting patiently and start taking our minds and focusing our minds on other things, what the Bible say, if you be risen with Christ, set your, set your affections yeah, things on things above. above. If we begin to set our affections on things above, Guess what? Before you know it, our season right, will be right, over. Right. If we don't go through something, what can we tell somebody else? Right, right. You can, in actuality, you can't really say much to somebody if you haven't been going through some mm-hmm. experience. If you have never experienced pain, if you have never experienced the miracles, the healing, mm-hmm. all that God is, you really can't tell anyone. When they're going through something, like you, if you lost a loved one, and you never lost a loved one. Yes. You really cannot, you really don't know what to say to a person if they lost the, you haven't lost your mama, you haven't lost your daddy, and they lost the mom or the dad. It's very difficult to, you maybe just say, I'm praying for you, but you cannot really give all, you don't have all the knowledge because you have not experienced it. Now you can go on Google and go Google some things, but it's not <laughs> the same, yes. the, the, you know, able to, to um, empathize with mm-hmm. someone or mm-hmm. sympathize with them. You have to go through certain things to be able to be of help to others. That's right. That's Emotionally right. or spiritually. You know, you can pray, but it's it's different. It's a difference. Mm-hmm. Because when you when you when you get with someone that you know that they've been through, it's that confidence. Yes. And yes. you can see it. Yes. And you can feel it in the conversation. Yes, yes. You know, and they pretty much can tell you your story. Yes. Because they have the same story and they they went through the same thing that you're actually going through. It's like, right. Oh, well you with me last night when you really wasn't. So the thing about seasons is we have to learn that in our season, whichever season we fall in, even in our growing season, even in the season that you're in right now, there's still room to grow. There's still more things that need to be done in this season. Higher heights and deeper depths 
is what we go in. We go in the Lord. And if you're in that season where, you know, you on top of your game and God is nothing is bothering you and the devil ain't causing you no problems, you better try to turn around and think. Stop and say, uh uh, something ain't right. Right, right. Because the devil is going to be on his job in whatever season it is. Right, right. right. He's going to always be on his job. So it's good for us to do what? It's good for us to take a self examination of ourselves, you know. Check to see if anything, is there any unforgiveness in our heart? Right, right, you know? Right. Check to see if we need to forgive somebody else. Or, you know, we need to talk to somebody that we right. may have wronged in this season while we're in this dry season. Yeah. So when all this, when, when, when God begin to bring us out, there's no baggage. There's no baggage. Yes. There's yes. nothing left. Right. And we can move on into the next season. Right. And every season that we go through is not a bad season. That's not what the Bible says. It's a time to live. Mm -hmm. It's a time to die. It's a time to be happy. It's a time. It's, it's a time to be set. Everything there is a season for us Amen. to go through. Our Father is loving. Amen. He's a loving God. He got us when we up, and He got us when we down. And what we focus on is we focus on the down, because we're trying to lift them up. Right. Because God is trying to get us all to a certain place. Because whether you believe it or not, he's coming back. Yes. Amen. And God is so sovereign mm -hmm. that he wants everyone. He loves everyone. Yes. And he wants everyone to come up out of their dry season. Yes, yes, yes. So what do we do when we're lonely? We go to the word. Mm -hmm. We can worship. Dwell with God. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high. Amen. Shall abide under the shadow. When you got a problem in your season, <laughs> begin to worship. That's right. If you, if you, if you can't read to the word, you can hear it. Either way it goes, it's getting down in your spirit. Yes. And, and fasting. It didn't say when you fast. Mm -hmm. If you fast. It said when you fast. Mm -hmm. Do it like this. Mm -hmm. It all works together for our good yes. in yes. our season. Yes. Final remarks. Glory to God. I'd like everyone to realize that the season that you're in, God already got it in control and He is preparing you for greater. Yes. So it doesn't seem like you may have lost something or you have lost something. And even say, for example, we would talk about Job. Job lost everything. But he didn't realize that he's going to gain much more mm -hmm. than what he had. But God prepared him to able to realize that yes you had it and it, you lost it so when you get it again your perspective would be that different. be yeah. different yeah. glory to god you're trusting god even at a greater level greater level Lord, say if the enemy come i want to wipe you out again you say you know what god did it then he can do it again that's right glory that's to good. god hallelujah amen and amen. also remember this in the word in psalms it says yea though i walk through the valley yeah, do I walk through that season? That's right. Through. Through. We're not staying in it. I will feel no evil. So that means you're going through. Through. You're hey, not going to stay yes, in it. There's, yes. a, there's a light at the end Glory, of the tunnel. Glory to God. You're not staying you're in it. You're not going to stay right there. Yes, you're not going yes. around and around in a circle. You're going to come out Glory of it. Glory to God. Glory to God. So I, 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 I thank God for this time, but I want everyone to, to, to realize there is a season. To walk in your season. Whatever season that you're in, Deal with it. I thank y'all for coming to Times of Refreshing. And this is Prophet Sherry Lock Bishop. And I'm asking everyone to tune in again next Sunday at 7 a.m. God bless y'all. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. It don't matter.